Yeah, it's your boy. <laughs> Yo, you know, I got a love Jones. <laughs> And I'm gonna let you know what it is. Have you ever in your life, girl, been wine and dine? Well, that is what I do if you gave me the time. The mother chicks are done if you decided to be mine. The mothers do the corny girl, kick them off the line. Flowers, candy, edible arrangements, shows, a movie, some other entertainment. Life for me would be your best decision. Playing hard to get is not an impossible mission. If you think about it, girl, you're in a good position. An old school swag with some new school. I'll be your best friend, even wiping away your tears, even get your pantene when it's time to wash your hair. See, I don't have an issue when it comes to pampering, even when you get your pads when you start cramping it. Your future's looking rather good, sit and think hard. Your plans have an answer, then you owe it all to God. I got a love Jones, love Jones, I got a love Jones. Love Jones, I got a love Jones, love Jones, yes. I got a love Jones, I got a love Jones, 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 sweet lemonade girl, sweet potato pie, sweet like a sugar candy apple in my eye, let me taste the sugary spot between your thighs, now tell me would you like that, all right, all right, all right, you be my genie in the lamp, but I won't rub you three times. I'll lick you like a stamp. But on the real girl, we can chill and wait for that. Get our frequent mileage on, leave the safe for that. Maybe hit a beach, maybe Costa Rica. Mm. What I'm gonna do with your girl, use a keeper. Pretty brown eyes, babe. When'd you get them keepers? Any dude would acting up with you, I put him in the sleeper. All I see is the best for you to find the things in life. The house with a picket fence with Scott and want some ice. A coop in the garage, sedan in the driveway. Pop the top in the summer cruise along the highway that's all yeah you know you know life is too short so i gotta let you know how i'm feeling and it's your boy mikey j mikey jones and i got a lot of jones for you girl and i know you got one for me too uh, yeah, let's go. I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones. Love Jones, I got a love Jones, love Jones, yeah. I, I got a love Jones. Jones. Uh, yeah. You know I got a love Jones. Uh, I got a love Jones. Jones. I got a love Jones. <laughs> For you, Mikey J. All right, all right. That was Mr. Mikey J in Love Jones. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. This is Spicy Gray, your host of the Unspoken Heart Discussion Hour. We have a very special treat for you today. So make sure that you share, share, share. Do a watch party and enjoy. Hopefully you got your favorite glass of wine and also something pleasing to snack on because we're going to do that thing today. We're going to start off with our announcements today. So what we got going on, as y'all been seeing throughout the week, is the homeless feeding that we're going to be doing on the 16th. I want to say thank y'all so much. Y'all have really been uh, tuning in and reaching out to me and making calls, and I've been doing a lot of pickups. So th keep the food coming in. We are just asking for the donations for the bags of chicken, the green beans, and the sack of potatoes. If you want to volunteer, please email me at the Unspoken Heart. 70 at AOL.com. We will be having that event right here on Parent Bottle in the parking lot of AutoZone. So just tune in and continue to contact us if you want to assist us with anything. Also, we have the Christmas toy donation drive still going on. It's going to go on until the deadline of the 19th. 
Go ahead, go ahead. I thank the ones that have donated already. Thank you so much. Let's fill this box up. Let's overfill it so that we can get it into the shelter on time before Christmas Day. But let's not forget the mothers as well. Donate that purple purse to signify domestic violence that we're standing our ground to break that chain. So I really appreciate that. Make sure you put a purple polish inside of there, something to make her feel beautiful, smell good, or just make her smile for that Christmas day. I truly, truly appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for so much. Now, what we have is born and raised in Nuremberg, New York, graduated from Newburgh Free Academy. She possesses two associate degrees, two bachelor degrees, one master degree, and working towards PhD in criminal justice. She is also devoted spiritual voc vocationalist, founder of the U-Turn program. She is also the published author of A Chef's Ingredients to Deception, A Seven Course Meal. I introduce to y'all right now, Miss Betty Lewis. Hello, hello, Miss Betty. How are we doing? Hello there. How are you? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming on in. Hear you, right now, we're going to bring in our next guest, which our, uh, our guest is a Native American mainstream recording artist. He's a producer. Y'all very familiar with him on my show. He's also a actor, owner, and founder of Guard Your Grill Clothing Line. Movie producer and director of films such as Bella, Chill Pill, Keys and Cubs, Colorblind, Time Matter, and now filming and directing from the published book of Betty Lewis, a chef ingredient to deception, Mr. Mikey J. Hello, hello, mister. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on. How you been doing up there in New York? I'm all right. Take it easy. You all right? Yeah. I heard you got some cold weather up there. Doing well up yeah. there. Yeah. Well, we need to bring some down here to Texas. We we, we hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Also born and raised in New York. She obtains a Bachelor of Science degree in Legal Studies from John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Obtains a certificate in studio and film production from Box Net Studios at Lehman College. Owner and founder of the Shanti QT Show on the Box Net Television and Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I introduce to everyone, Shani Williams. Hello. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Hello. Yeah. How are we? <laughs> now, we also have another guest, native of the PA, Philadelphia, residing in North Carolina. He is a multi talented powerhouse, my reptile model, acting for various music videos, and she has landed her first major role in the movie Colorblind. A social producer at Anya Film Group. I now introduce to everyone Miss PJ Johnson. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. How we doing? Great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Born and raised in Newark, New Jersey. Residing in Somerset, New Jersey. This jockey, producer, promoter, human service advocate for the New Jersey State Department of Children and Family. Founder and owner of Lewis Gordon Productions. He was a member of New Jersey Gymnastics Association and a silver medalist in the Junior Olympics in 1967. He worked as a sports board operator, media, worked in legendary music executive. I've now introduced to y'all Mr. Lou Gordon. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Now, our next member is from New York, New York Yonkers. I never heard of that one. Known to many for her well built acting skills within the theater. She worked in plays and films such as Express Diary of the Lovely Shantae, Church Hurt, 
Touch Not My Heart, Scammer Wives as Sade, presented by LF Entertainment, Body Jum Jumpers Resurrection, and Dope Games. I present to everyone, Shantia Bailey. <laughs> hello, hello, beautiful. How we doing? Good, how you doing? Great. I'm loving the braids. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Miss <laughs> Lewis, Miss Lewis, you there? Miss Betty Lewis? Okay, I think she's having a little bit of a technical difficulties. We're going to give her a minute. So what we're going to do is go ahead on. We're going to ask these questions to Mr. Mikey J. He is a very known one on my show. Might have to make you a co-host one day. <laughs> Now, what inspired you to transform a, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. You were in the midst of filming your very own projects, which appeared to me consumed a lot of time. How did it feel when you were introduced to directing another film and the mere ideation of bringing it to life from a published book, especially one based on a true story? Um. I mean, to be honest, uh, can you hear you me? You there, Mikey? Can you hear me? All right, can, can you hear me? Okay, there we go. Can you hear now? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Did you hear the question? Yeah. Um. um I'm sorry, can you ask me for the question again? How did it feel when you were introduced to a directing another film and the mere ideation of bringing into life from a published book, especially one based on a true story? Uh, um, it's, it's actually, um, I think it's, I think it's more of an, um, it was a, it was a challenge for me. Um, even it was a challenge to even, um, uh, present the idea to Miss Lewis. Um, I've never shot an adaptation of a novel before. And it, it was, I think the challenge was more so, okay, you know, you, you, you know, you can do what you do, but, but, you know, I presented it to her and um, I was very forth, forthcoming with everyone, um, the cast and everyone that, okay, he froze this up. is my first time uh, shooting this type of film. Okay. And, and, we'll and retrospect. Wait till he unfreezes. Uh, Miss Betty, how we doing? Can you hear me? You hear me now? Yes. Oh, um, it, it was, it was, it was more so uh, being forthright and forthcoming to the cast to let them know that this is the first time uh, this, this film, this type of film, uh, that this would be the type of film for me to uh, shoot and write in retrospect of the content and the uh, the the age demographic. We're here, but the, um, the um, age demographic. A... Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, to, uh, and the age Very demographic. Um, Hi. So um, the seniors, like such as the the fifty and older. Um, audience, you know, you really, you really have to capture them, uh, capture, you know, get them engaged with your writing. Okay, he froze you know, up again. Let's give him a minute. I see Miss Lewis coming back in. Yes, we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. Okay, there we go. There you go. Is that better? Yes, a lot better. All right. So, uh, basically, for for me, it's about keeping the audience engaged, and you know you have to keep the the fifty and up audience engaged, and that's from dialogue and chemistry, and that's where Shawnee and and Mr. Gordon could come in at. Um, they really are going to be the captivators of the audience. You know, Miss um, Lewis wrote a very good piece of literary work and you know you have to really really capture that and also embellish on it um 
because the book isn't like 100 or 200 pages. So you want to embellish on on what she read or what she wrote. So em embellishing on it was very easy for me. But just ju just to uh, shoot the type of film, it's it's uh, um it's just it's been great. It's been honor. Give him just another sec, and we also waiting for Miss Lewis to come back in. You, you couldn't hear me. Hello. Okay, there we go. You couldn't hear me. Uh uh. We can hear you now. Uh, what was the last part you heard? We heard that about the age going, the upper age, and it embellishing. Yeah, it's yeah. So you know, you you want to embellish, but not oversaturate the audience. And right. what Shawnee um and and Mister and Pops did, Mister Gordon did, um, out the gate was they 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 just took what I wrote and they just brought it to life. And wow. what I wrote, I mean, from the screenplay, from the script portion. Of, of the film um and everybody read the book and you know it's just been an honor to be filmed with them thus far wow <laughs> okay when betty lewis shared the concept behind this book what preparations do did you have to format it in order to begin uh tracking it down as a film um, it, it was fairly, it was fairly easy. Uh, like once she broke the story down to me, um, cause it's a, it's a true story based off of true events. Mm -hmm. And once she had broken that down to me, I was like, wow, you know, and that part was easy for me. Um, I had already had ideas running through my head in retrospect, what I want to write about just off of what she told me. Okay. And then uh, Mr. Dennis Lasker had conversations with um, Mr. Lou, Lou Gordon. Mm -hmm. And then what Mr. what Mr. Lou Gordon told me, and then what Shawnee was telling me, and then what Miss Peach was telling me, I'm like, well, damn, I, I don't even need to read the rest of the book, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but um, it, um, it, it was really easy because by Miss Peach, Shawnee, and, and, um, and, 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 and Lou, Lou Gordon, Pops uh, speaking, having dialogue, having dialogue with Mr. Dennis Laster and with Miss Betty herself, and then um, letting me know what what them conversations uh, consisted of. It, it it really made me it really made it easier for me to embellish upon that book even more. So I took something that would normally be about thirty to forty five minutes and. I'm I'm turning it into about an hour and a half. Oh, okay, okay. Now, what did you consider when assigning the actors and actresses to the characters in this book? Oh, um, no, no, knowing Miss Lewis and being around Miss Lewis, mm -hmm. already knew off the already knew off the rip that Shawnee would have <laughs> been perfect for her. Um, they both. <laughs> they're, they're they're really both similar mm -hmm. in style, uh, and they're really laid back people. They're not overly out loud. They're not loud people. They're not boisterous. Uh, they're just really laid back, comfortable. Okay, we can um, wait for him to come right back in. You hear me now? Hello. Okay, there you go. They they they're really laid back people. They're not. They're the type of people that that um the loudest one in the room is you know they're not the loudest one in the room. They're really laid back, cool, calm, collected people, and I already knew that was the rip that that Shawnee would play Miss Lewis perfectly. Um, Miss Peach, um, uh, Cookie, um, the the lady Miss Peach is playing, um. That made it easy because Miss Peach already has that that she already has uh, the, the look of Miss Cookie, and mm. to direct it and just direct it will be easy, and and um Mike. to 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 direct her would be easy, mm. um because I I I work with Miss Peach already, 
Right. So knowing her work ethic and Pops, hands down, he he's a pimp. He, he old pimp anyway. So um, him playing that role was easy when she broke the character of Chef J down to me. I was like, oh, okay. man, Pops could, I think Pops Mikey. could do that. Oh, there you go. When, when she broke the character Chef J down to me, I said, no, Pops, uh, Lou, Lou Gordon could play that role, hands down. Mm. And as far as Shantia Belly, um, you know, uh, we, we had gotten an email. I sent the email to everybody. And Shawnee had got back to me right away and, and said, yo, look, that's my daughter. <laughs> so, and I was like, yeah, you know. And when we filmed for the hour or whatever, whatever it was, the hour and a half, I'm like, I got another role for her in one of my other movies. That's how mm. this phenomenal Shantia Belly is, you know. Yes. And I mean, like when I've been watching the little clips you've been putting up and the pictures and like Shani, she just she passes me as that shy, innocent type. And it's like it's like you can't help but fell in love with her, you mm -hmm. know, especially the way she's looking up into the camera. She's like a perfectionist. I mean, she's mm -hmm. good at how she just poses for that photo. And like yeah. when I seen Paige on your play page, Paige is just like the lively one. She's the one that like you want to go kick it with and have some fun and you know just down for whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, she's not. <laughs> yeah, so I just you know watching them too. I just I fell in love automatically, you know. So Miss um, Lewis hasn't came in yet. Let me see here. Okay, Miss Lewis, are you with us? Okay, she's still freezing up. So, what we'll do, we'll we'll go to a small interlude. Oh, there's and, uh, oh, there's, is she kept popping back on. Miss Lewis, I think she's having bad reception where she's at right now. Yeah, and and I'm in the woods, man. So, oh wow, oh wow. Okay, well, we're going to go to a small interlude. Hopefully, when we come back, she could be able to tune in with us. So we'll go ahead and uh, take a small break. And we, uh, if she's not in yet, we'll probably just go ahead and talk to the cast members from there. Good afternoon, Mikey. Yo, what up, dog? Mikey, I have the best news. I need you to come down to my office right away. Oh, word. <laughs> okay, I'll see you again. Let's fly to the air. You and I, girl, hold tight, have no fear. No fear. I'm here in a flash. Black coupe, white suit, the 50 on my dash. Yep, I'm coming through, man. Or the bar machine, get out the fast lane. Has a downshift quick, down one, up five, kicking at the six. You say speed turns you on, I bangs, I boogie, I pops like popcorn. I got shares in this game. I like you, girl, because you don't care about the fame. Plus your man is a lame, suck ass, I should tear my frame. Cause he messes up a real dude's cats with a purpose and keeps it so old school. Put the flowers in the candy, a smile on your face, yeah, that would be dandy. G4 flight, streaming through the air on any given night. Now tell me what you like, shot a in your glass as you feel your appetite. Not for destruction, romance, affection, and a whole lot of loving. JP and I have got great news for you. We have been in extensive negotiation for weeks, but Rap Legends and Sony Red has agreed to every single one of our terms. We have an ironclad contract that no one can overturn, and you're going to be making the billions. Same word. They see that, yo. So all I need you is to, to sign at the dotted right. line, <laughs> and we're on a road. That's what's up. I like this pen. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Now tell me how you feel when I'm Marvin, you're tan and sexual healing. <laughs> I got you, girl, and that's real talk, my perpetual pearl. 
my diamond in the rough. Horse and carriage ride, folks staring at us. My mind is clear, I keep some humble, won't fumble. Put away your fears. I wanna be your best friend, no child's play, baby. Hide the hold till the end. I heard all the war stories about how we treated you. Turn the pain into glory. You see, I've been there and done that. Lesson that I learned, I would never ever run back. Never. To the man that I was. Okay, we're gonna have to come back to that. I don't know what's going on today with the music, but that is Mikey J and Anya Music Group presenting Hero. Okay, we're gonna continue on with Mikey J. Now, Mikey, uh, what what is it that makes Shawnee Williams Lady B? She a bug out. <laughs> okay, hold up. <laughs> nah, okay, um, you there? Yeah, can you hear me now? Hello? Okay, can you hear me now? I can I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, hold on just a second. Something just happened. Okay, okay. Think it was the chords here. Okay, now uh what is it that makes Shawnee Williams Lady B? She a bug out. <laughs> she a bug out. <laughs> yeah, her and Miss Peach are like twin sisters. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, what makes her is is you know both I would say Shawnee has a vulnerability that people can detect. The vulnerability is that people can detect her kindness mm. and mistake her kindness for weakness. And when you mistake so a woman's kindness for weakness, that's a recipe for disaster. Oh wow. And that's the person that Shawnee is in real life. And she was perfect okay. for that role because someone took advantage of someone's kindness. And when you take advantage of a woman's kindness, I don't know, that's just a recipe for disaster. And and Chef Jay about to get it. So <laughs> Shawnee was perfect. She it was it was it was a no brainer. It was just a no brainer. Her shyness, um, her her cool, calm, and collective um, um, demeanor. Mm -hmm. But she's just a beautiful spirit, you know? And when someone takes advantage of a beautiful spirit like that, that karma comes back to them. Wow, wow. Now, Shani, who is Lady B and what is she like? In your own words. Lady B is someone who falls in love with someone and then he turns around and hurts her and now she's out for revenge. That's how oh. I see it. That sounds interesting. Wow. <laughs> what do you like about her and what is the aura you get when you're in her character? Um, Someone that has been hurt. Um, Someone that you know, was in love and now she's like, you know, feeling like, wow, like why me? Mm -hmm. You know, why am I going through this? Right. So, yeah, that's what I get. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Every person there is strength and there's weakness. Can you tell us being in the shoes of Lady B, what is one weakness you sense and one strength that you get from her? Um, okay, weakness. No, I didn't. Feel well, no. <laughs> um, a weakness. Hmm. Being too kind, being too, I guess, naive. Um, one of her strengths. Ooh, um. Just still being strong at the end. Mm -hmm. After everything has gone down, everything that has happened, she's still maintaining that strength. Okay, okay. Now, Shani, could you tell us this character that you are in? Can you relate to her in any way? Um, I think all women can relate. In, in a sense, yes. Because I'm, I'm sure there are many women out there that have been hurt. Mm -hmm. And I think we all can relate. 
Okay. And what do you like the most about this character here? Um, for me, it was a challenge because like I am, like Mikey said, I am a shy person. So for me to do this character, I was like, I don't think I could pull this off, but I'm pulling it off. I think I am. Okay. So how did it make you feel when he approached you with this? Um, I was excited and scared at the same time. Okay. I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> but I was excited. I was excited. I just wanted to have fun with it. So here I am. Okay. And Mikey J, did you did you automatically feel that even though she had this shyness, that she was this person? Um, yeah. Yeah. I was actually with Miss Lewis the day I called Shawnee. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, my main thing was I hope Miss Lewis approved. <laughs> 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 because this is her this is her life. You know, right. and uh, this is a story about her. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was all about getting the approval of Miss of Miss Lewis, and thank God Miss Lewis had already seen Shawnee's work, um, in some of my behind the scenes footage from um, I think Colorblind, mm -hmm. and um, it was just a no brainer from there, man. So I, the most, I think that was the most uh, nervous part that I had that day was. Please, 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 please let this lady love Shawnee. <laughs> that was it. That was it for me. And she did. Okay, okay. Now we're gonna go over to Miss Betty Lewis. Are you with us now? Can you can you hear me? Miss Lewis? I think she froze. Yes, yeah, she froze. Okay. Thank you, Shani. Thank you. So what we're going to go to now is our reptile model, Miss Peach. Hi, you. How we doing? How we doing? Awesome. Awesome. Hello, everybody out there in television land. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, seeing and hearing your personality, I can honestly see you as a cookie. Which is your character's name? Do you relate to this character in any way? If so, how? Um, I would say that I have yet to do her character just yet, but from what I read, I um I can see myself um doing this and yes the inner me you know there's some people that right. have like you know dual personalities um yes that that um i don't want to call her uppity but very high class and you know that um mm. high maintenance as well um <laughs> but at the same time i think I, I, when I when I read about her, I, I kind of feel a little bit sorry for her in a sense because of what, you know, like it was okay to endure this type of behavior from her husband, but in the same token, not really, not really appreciated, but kind of like dealt with it, but still maintained her, her, uh, feelings of, hey, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to hold my head up. I'm still going to be, you know, who I am. So um, I think that part, and it's a little familiar because there's some parts of it I have been in her shoes. So, yeah. Okay. I think she didn't froze up on me for a minute. Oh, I did? Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm over here just running my mouth. You mean tell me I'm frozen? <laughs> Oh heck no! Right, what did you lose? We're gonna do this all over again. I, I, I heard everything she said. Yeah, I don't know. It's just probably on here. But what we're gonna do? Either uh, if Miss Betty could chime in at any time. Of these questions. This question is from Miss Betty or Mikey. What did you see in PJ to place her in Cookie shoes? I let Miss Betty get that one. <laughs> I think I think she probably froze. Um, with Miss Peach, from from the way um, I saw, I saw the picture of of, of, of Miss Cookie. All the energy. I saw a had. picture of her. She's there. We can hear her a little bit. 
Okay, let's see here. But it keeps freezing. Okay, here we go. Miss Betty, you there? Yeah, I just think it's something. Whatever, okay. wherever she's at, the position she's at, that's why I had to change my position. Yes, I, I am. Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear oh. everybody else. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. Okay, now what I was uh, asking- You asked about Ms. PJ playing the role? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I can I love hear it. you. I love it. She does have a high energy. <laughs> You asked about Miss PJ playing the role. Yes, right from the jump, her energy—I knew she would be able to rock. Wow! Wow! <laughs> now, Miss Peach, what do you enjoy about Cookie when you're in her character? Um, uh, again, how um, she has this external self-assurance. And, you know, and she commands the room whenever she's there. So, um, you know, she's a force to be reckoned with. Uh, you can't ignore her, that's for sure. Um, so I'm looking forward to pulling it off, you know, um, and making uh, Mikey and Betty very proud. Wow, wow. Now, did I freeze on any of that? I better not have. No, you didn't. <laughs> Now, if you could change one thing about Cookie, what would it be? If I can change one thing about Cookie, um, I don't know. That that's a tough one. Um, that's a tough one because, unfortunately, like the way the whole thing played out. Like every person is necessary, but um, I don't know. I think I think if I could change one thing would be for her to be a little bit more, maybe maybe a little bit more demanding of Chef Jay to uh, maybe stop some of his antics. But there's still a lot of un. un undisclosed information in there so it's hard to really say what she did or did not do right so, and know. i'm looking at mr gordon's face and then he just looking like really yeah. <laughs> that's my cheating husband y'all <laughs> <laughs> uh, miss lewis can you hear me Miss Lewis, you there? Okay. Well, I'm going to go here because we are going to go to another interlude. But when we go, we're going to return with Mr. Lewis Gordon, the chef. The chef. And <laughs> I, know I told him at the beginning of the show that I had a little surprise for him. So I know he's I know he's wondering like, okay, what has she got up her sleeve? <laughs> True. Probably another wife. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know that I've been watching y'all. So everyone, this is Mikey J. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, it's your boy. <laughs> Yo, you know, I got a love Jones. <laughs> I'm gonna let you know what it is. Have you ever in your life, girl, been wine and dine? But well, that is what I do if you gave me the time. The mother chicks are done if you decided to be mine. The mothers do the funny girls, kick them off the line. Flowers, candy, edible arrangements, shows, a movie, some other entertainment. Life for me would be your best decision. Playing hard to get is not an impossible mission. If you think about it, girl, you're in a good position. An old school swag with some new school flair. I'll be your best friend, even wiping away your tears. 
kids even get your pantene when it's time to wash your head. See, I don't have an issue when it comes to pampering. Even when you get your pads when you start cramping it. Your future's looking rather good, sit and think hard. Your parents have an answer, then you owe it all to God. I got a love Jones, love Jones, I got a love Jones, love Jones, I got a love Jones, love Jones, I got a love Jones, I got a love Jones, 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 sweet lemonade, girl, sweet potato pie, sweet like a sugar candy apple in my eye, let me taste the sugary spot between your thighs, now tell me, would you like that? All right, all right, all right. Uh, you be my genie in the lamp, but I won't rub you three times. I'll lick you like a stamp. But on the real girl, we can chill and wait for that. Get our creeping mileage on, leave the safe for that. Maybe hit a beach, maybe Costa Rica. Mm. What I'm gonna do with your girl, use a keeper. Pretty brown eyes, baby. Where'd you get them peepers? Any dude would act up with you, I put him in the sleeper. All I see is the best for you, the finer things in life. The house with a picket fence, we got to want some ice. A coop in the garage, sedan in the driveway, pop the top in the summer, cruise along the highway. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, life is too short. So I gotta let you know how I'm feeling. And it's your boy Mikey J, Mikey Jones. And I got a love Jones for you, girl. And I know you got one for me, too. Uh, yeah, let's go. I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones, I got a love Jones, love Jones. I got a love Jones. Love Jones, I got a love Jones, love Jones, yeah. I, I got a love Jones. Jones. Uh, yeah. You know I got a love Jones. I got a love Jones. Yeah. Jones. I got a love Jones. <laughs> For you. Love it, love it, love it. Now, Miss Lewis, can you hear me now? You there, Miss Lewis? I can hear you. Okay, great. Can you share with us what a chef's ingredients to deception, a seven course meal, is actually based upon? about a seven course meal that was next level but during of deception so as the course you there going on devastation happened and by the end of the meal i'm here okay. can you hear me i think she froze up on us again so we're gonna give her a minute Okay, are you there? Can you? Hello? Yeah. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear us? Okay, there you go. I can there you hear go. you, but can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you real good. Okay. Better? Yes, a lot better. Could you share with everyone what a chef's ingredients to deception, a seven course meal? It's actually based upon. Okay. It's based upon a true story. The seven course meal was supposed to be the next level of the relationship. But what happened during that meal is each 
course created more devastation more deception came out with each course and by the seventh course it was a wrap it was completely total okay now upon completing the book what kind of emotion was you able to experience knowing that it was all finally put together I'm hearing every other word. I'm sorry, yes. can you repeat that? Upon completion of this book, what sort of emotion did you have knowing that it was finished before actually bringing it into a film? The book wasn't finished. That was just a seven course meal that revealed the devastation then the next part is the devastation revealed because there was so much that unraveled during that seven course meal couldn't put it all in one book the first part was about love, love. true love the second part is devastation revealed which is going to okay okay love it love it Now, we're going to go over to Mr. Lou Gordon. How we doing, Mr.? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. And based upon what, what's being said, this is a fantastic cast. I love the energy that I get from Miss Peach and Shawnee and Mikey is off the top. So, <laughs> you know, as I'm developing this character, what I'm finding out more is that his moral compass is broke. Okay. Clearly, his moral compass is broke. Okay, well, maybe we can kind of change your expression to kind of bring you in th into this character. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I had something little for you, so here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, give it to us. <laughs> yeah, the spice of life. <laughs> you want me to get up and dance? <laughs> yeah, I was going up in that kitchen dance now. <laughs> I knew it was going to get you. <laughs> yeah, you sure got me on that one. <laughs> now, Mr. Gordon. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm. Uh, let's see here. What do you What do you act as in the film? As we I, know, as a show. But what sort of char character does he possess? He's a player. He's a player. He's a player. So is he one that women try to run from? No, he's a one. He's he's a type that women will run to once they know once he presents himself to. Them. Mm hmm. Okay. Now from the from the character stance, he appears to love cooking as well. Do, yes, do Lewis Gordon love to cook in the kitchen? Uh when it's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's some kind of conditional love. Yeah, you know, I mean I don't cook, I don't have to cook, fortunately, <laughs> but I do know how. Okay, okay. Now, Mikey and Miss Betty, what made you choose Mr. Gordon? for the shelf when it came down to knowing about this character. <laughs> I do not see that in him. <laughs> um, working with um, Mr. Gordon. Well, Mikey J. Um, called him. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Miss Lewis. Mikey J. called okay, I think she froze him up um, while we were together. So uh, before and she comes back, uh, Mikey, there were some things what that made you said while on the phone say Mr. Gordon? That I knew. She's actually, she's actually talking now. You can hear me? Who's responding? Hello, you hear me? 
Yeah, I can, can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Okay, Ms. Lewis, we're going to go with you first. What was in, going through your mind when you see Mr. Gordon and teaming him up with this character here? Uh, Mikey J. called Mr. Lewis. Bring him on the phone. His tone of voice, he was suave with his answers. I knew he'd be able to move it. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's the pimp. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Now, Mr. Gordon, what did you enjoy about acting as Chef J? Uh, Chef J is someone who has a certain amount of suave with regard to playing on the women. And uh, I enjoyed being in the presence of, of a beautiful Shawnee. And it was easy to, you know, to speak the lines to her. It wasn't difficult. And I had said that to her once before. It's easy to speak certain truths to people you know, when, when you get the vibe. So right. there it was, you know, although, you know, I've been getting beat up on Facebook from Miss Peach, but, you know, I'm waiting for her to do her thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Johnny, what is it like working with Mr. Gordon? Oh, it was great. It was great. I mean, he's, he's easy to work with. I mean, you know, the chemistry is there, you know, good friends. Great, so great. it worked so, out. So, I mean, does he make it easy for you to actually be in your character, knowing the type of character that he's portraying? Absolutely. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's an overall he's nice chosen. person. I, I don't see him as that. Am I? Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, now we can hear you. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. No, he made it easy. You know, he's his personality alone is he's a sweetheart. He he really is a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. I, I try to look past the character so that I can look past. <laughs> okay. Well, Mr. Gordon, yes, in, in acting as Chef J, did you apply any skills from your experiences in bringing this character to life? Yep, absolutely. How yes, I did. I mean, you know, I mean, as Mikey refers to me as Pops, I'm one of the older character. I'm one of the older actors on the set. So therefore, I've been around. In my earlier years, you know, I've I've had some experience. Okay. I don't know if he's froze up to y'all. I think he froze up about there he go. Yeah. So I don't know what you heard, but you know, being one of the senior citizens on <laughs> on the set, I do have some experience prior to arriving where I am in my life now. Wow. So playing, doing the player role, you know, I might know a little bit of something about that. Not to say I was good at it, but, you know, I might know a little something about it. Yeah, I... <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the ingredients, do you see it fit as justification to the deception in this film? Do I see the ingredients? Yes. I definitely see it. I see the ingredients. I, I see that based upon reading the book, Chef J had a lot more going on than the book will reveal because during a conversation with Miss Betty Lewis, she explained more to me that was in the book. So mm -hmm. the deception is real and the deception is deep. And um, I'm going to do my best to pull it off. Okay, I think he froze up again. Okay, I don't know what part you heard, but what I was saying is that the ingredients of the deception is real because during the conversation with Miss Betty Lewis, she revealed to me some aspects of what took place in her life that was not written in the book. Okay. So it's it's deep. It's very deep. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> You know, every time I see you, I'm gonna think about that music, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> and we know you got you got some rhythm in your <laughs> Yeah, I still got a little something going on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now I'ma say, Mikey, what did you see in Miss the newest one, Shantia Bailey? What was it about her? And what was her character? What is her character? 
All right, you can hear me? Yes. All right. Um, so we put out a, um, uh, uh, a, a casting call for the character, Nayira. And um, it was quite a few submissions, but her submission stood out uh, because she wasn't acting. See, if you're on camera and mm -hmm. it looks like you're acting, then you're doing a bad job. Right. And when I saw Nayaris, I mean, Shantia's um, uh, reel, I was like, yo, the, the, I said, yo, she, she, she really can act. She's really good. And um, I looked past whatever um, visual aspects or audio, whatever. I looked at her. I looked at her on camera. I looked at her emotions. I looked at her expressions. Everything that I, I looked at, Shawnee had already co-signed. But okay. the the main co uh, I think your mic is muted. Mine? Mine? No, Miss Lewis, I was trying to get her to answer the question as well. Oh, but when Shawnee had the the, the when Miss Peach had the conversation with her, uh Miss Peach co-signed her first, and then I spoke to Shawnee. And then Shawnee um had co-signed her real, but then Shawnee gave her a double a double tap co-sign when she actually spoke to her. And she was like, Look, we got my daughter. Um, she'll need to read. Uh, rehearse or something like that, Shawnee said to that to that fact. And I'm saying in my head, the hell she don't. But, <laughs> but nah, uh, you know, I, I trust Shawnee, Shawnee's uh, judgment, um, Miss Peach, Mr. Gordon, Miss Lewis, everybody that was sent, um, the whole team. I just trust my my, my team's um, opinion as well as mine. And now we have Nayera. Okay, she's okay, she's okay. just dope. Now, Miss Lewis, what was your perception of Shantia when you first seen her for that role? Miss Lewis? Okay, we'll wait for her to come back so she can answer that question. Now, Shantia Bailey, how you doing? Now, who do you hey. act as? How do you pronounce her name? Because I can't pronounce that. In Ni the film. Nayira. Ni Ni See, that's still going to be hard for Ni me. <laughs> what sort of character does she possess? When Mikey J sent me the footage, I she was really to do that. Did um, stepped up and I was very pleased. Okay, okay. Now, uh, Shantia, what sort of character does Naira have? Well, from the lines that were sent to me and how she acts mm -hmm. with um, Lady B, her mom, I took her as fun spirited, you know, outgoing. No, you're fine. Oh. Okay. Um outgoing, um, fun spirited and really close for her mother. So that's what I took from the lines that was presented to me and the, the okay. little background that I did get from her. Now with the acting skills that you possess. Can you tell us how you applied it to this character? So with the, the skills that I, I do have, um, I, I feel like I do have the knack to portray characters truly, and that's always what's always in my head. Shantia? Just imagine it's just my daily life and just... Okay, I can yes. barely hear you. Okay, there you can go. Can you hear me? We, yeah. we, we, we can actually hear everybody. Can you hear me? It might be on your end, Spicy. You good? Okay. So as as far as um the character, my acting skills, I always I always portray my characters as reality. So I always like to, as you know, be in tune with um my character and just make it reality. I don't really like to say words 
line. I don't really like to say the lines right from word. I really like to just make them my own, but still stay in character. So it's just the reality of it and just thinking that it's just me and it's just what it is everyday life. If I was just supposed to talk to you or talk to someone else, that's how okay. I just portray now, I mean, I can my say, When you first seen her acting for you, what was, what was your thoughts? Um, I was, I was already, um, I was already psyched from what Shawnee had told me, you know, um, or from how, how Shawnee, um, How Shawnee have um told me from the conversation they had and that she's good. So I, I went in there already knowing that we was gonna have a great day, you know. And um I would honestly say she she got about Okay. Now Shantia, going off of your bio, what attracted you to begin a career in doing actressing? It was really off the whim, to be honest. Um, I went to my first play maybe mm -hmm. five, six years ago. And when I sat there in the audience, I was like, I can do that. And ever since that, then, I just looked into how can I become an actress. I just looked into classes. I just looked into what I can do to be that person on stage. And once I did get my feet wet and got into okay, it, I just okay. I couldn't stop. Now, I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked Johnny. What is the negative part of this character and the positive side of her? So, so far, the negative part is hooking my mama up with that one right there. <laughs> That's the negative part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, how different is it to act in a film and to act in a theater play, which you're more normal to? So for film, um, you can mess up and you can, you know, things could be cut out, cut in, you know, and it's different takes. And you have to keep repeating and repeating and you got to drink some water and take some breaks. But for the stage, it's, it's one hit and you keep going. So if you mess up, you got to keep going. You got to, you know, do do your best to just keep going, improvise and all of that. And I I feel like my skills for theater really helps with film um, because you, you, we do mess up on stage, but if you know how to play it off, no one in the audience will know. So I feel like that's the difference between film and um, theater. Okay. okay. Good answer, good answer. Now we're gonna go to another interlude for a minute, and then we're gonna return back with Miss Lewis and Mr. Mikey J and answer some questions along with the cast members. So we'll be right back after this. Mikey J, Black Superman. Can you tell me why you hurt, miss? You don't deserve no. this nonsense you're going through. Treat us so worthless. You mean to show no respect for your heart. For I don't care about his feelings. I'm going to break y'all apart. See, I'm a real man, girl. I'm a real G. World life, girl. He ain't got nothing on me. Trying to buy your love with fancy jewelry. I'm a different type of man, girl, so I'm going to do me. Shower you with love and things that you need. Say my name, say my name, say my name, girl. Hold your hand and walk through the rain, girl. Listen, no, we came for the way I'm the pain, girl. Black Superman here to keep you sane, girl. Do the try to slow, get him out my lane, girl. Yeah. Hit him with a metal car and put him on a train, girl. Been like the Georgia, now he's out the plane, girl. Can you be my Superman? Yes, I can. Can you take me away from here? Let me through the atmosphere. Can you be my Superman? Yes, I can. Can you take me away from here? Let me through the atmosphere. Life is short. Being lame with you, Damn. you in the thought, so why he playing games with you? Just a thought, doesn't share the same pain with you. That that name, put me in that frame with you. Dude is whack, he's on the crown spree. 
breaking hearts of every dime piece. I'm on my job, I set your mind free. 24 7, girl, through the night. Black Superman, I was staying script tonight. Those colors on the bed, girl, when you get home. Hey. I write it for some way, you will never be alone. You put your mind and body, they put you in the zone. For real. Like a gay girl, better call Tyrone. Call yeah. on the cell where well, he can use my phone. Up, 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 up in the way, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Can you feel so for me? Yes, I can. Can you take me away from here? Let me through the atmosphere. Can you be my superman? Can you take me away from here? Let me through the atmosphere. Let's go. Baby. He can't do nothing for you. Can't do nothing for you. He's treating you wrong. Right. I'm but I'm a hero. hero. <laughs> hero. Gotcha. Can you be my superman? Yes, I can. Can you take me away from here? Fly me through the atmosphere. Can you be my superman? Yes, I can. Can you take me away from here? Fly me through the atmosphere. Let's go. Okay, we have Miss Betty Lewis back with us. Can you hear us, Miss Lewis? Miss Lewis, you... okay. Could you tell us after watching the cast miss, uh, members? I can hear. And also Mikey J as the producer and director. Can you give us a little of your, uh, uh, you know, your feeling when it came down to seeing them put this together from your book? Right from the onset, Mikey J made me feel at ease. One that he knew what he was doing. And then when I saw us together and the energy that each one of them had, it was amazing. So I knew that the book was one thing, but the movie was getting ready to take it to a whole new level that was going to bless everyone that had anything to do with it and everybody that came to it. It was, it's really going to be a blessing to help all the females out there to know that we're still standing and we can have. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm going to do a little something different and I know he wasn't expecting this part. So I'm going to mute everybody. And I um, specifically had this question for the cast members. Anybody could jump in at any time. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to ask Shani first. Shani, could you tell us what is your description when it comes down to Mikey J and Body Le uh, Betty Lewis in doing this movie and the book? What is the one word description that you could have for this? I'm sorry, repeat that. When it comes me. down to knowing Mikey J as a movie producer and director, mm -hmm. what is one word that you would use to describe him? And then one word that you would use to describe Miss Lewis as the published author? I would say outstanding. I mean, Mikey J's work alone speaks for himself. I mean, he, he's done like what, five, six movies already? Yes. And they all speak for himself. Miss Betty Lewis, um, I would say um, courageous to come out with this book and to be able to help other women. I think that in itself is just phenomenal. Yes, yes. Yeah, Miss PJ, we're going to go over to you with the same question. Can you give us, in your own words, the description when it comes down to Mikey Day as a movie producer, director, and also Miss Lewis when it comes down to being a published author with this book? Um, yes. For Mr. Mikey J, I would say he is a methodical mm -hmm. genius. 
Um, he's, <laughs> he's a beast with the camera and his thought process and being able to connect us all. It's like he, it's like he knew our character, he knew our personality would fit a character before he even met us, seriously, just from one conversation um, with, and I think that's just like, you just have to be a, a methodical genius to be able to do that. Um, and for Miss Betty Lewis, I would say that she is definitely um, God's gift. Um, you know, really, truly appreciate her to piggyback off of Shawnee. Yes, very courageous to be able to tell her story. And, um, and she didn't froze it's up. a blessing to be able to bring it into fruition. <laughs> All of it, go ahead. You said no. <laughs> yes. Can you, you said now? no. Can you hear me <laughs> Okay, so now with Miss Betty Lewis, I think she is God's gift, seriously. Um, and to piggyback off of uh, Shawnee, it is very courageous of her. And it is just a blessing to be able to bring her story into yeah. fruition on the silver screen. <laughs> Get all that without freezing. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Gordon, the same question. <laughs> well, based upon what's already been said, there's not too much left to say. But what I will say is that Mikey J is very insightful with regard to making a selection of who we are playing these roles. And Betty Lewis is introspective and very, very strong yeah. to share her story. I agree, I agree. Now, Ms. Shantia, same question, dear. I think you're mute. I think you're mute. You're muted. Uh, yeah, sure was. Sorry. <laughs> for PJ, from my experience, it he's just artist, just overall talented artist. He is a definition of artist for every outlook that he's in and everything that he does. He there? is a true wonderful artist. It's the camera. It's wonderful. Like he, 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 he got an eye for it. That's that him. You should artist. That's what you want. Like. <laughs> Betty is a strong woman for even telling her story, and just exceptional for even putting it out there to tell her story. Very exceptional and very just brave. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. Now, I'm going to go over to Mr. Mikey J. Now, I know you gave your perception when it came down to uh, when they was discussing about the, um, the book and everything. Could you tell us the description after all this, even filming it, because it seemed like it's real now that it's becoming on a, a, a screen versus just reading it out of a book. Could you give your description when it come down to Mr. Woods being as a published author and telling her story? Um, I'm sorry. I hate to re you just, can you repeat it. Could you give us your description when it comes down to Miss Lewis being that now you're going from reading it in the book and then seeing it on a live film with your with your cast members? Can you give a description when it comes down to Mrs. Lewis? Oh, um, you know, it takes it 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 takes a lot of um courage to live in your truth. True, true. Um, it, it takes a lot of faith to be fully transparent with the public, especially when they don't know you personally. And the society that we live in today are very prejudgmental. They're very, they're very judgmental, and people are okay. Mike, you good? Yeah, you can hear me. There you hey. go. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you good. Yeah, so society today is very judgmental. Mm -hmm. And you know, when 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 a woman, I don't I don't care if she's 18 or 80, um, is putting their truth out there. I don't I think that a lot of people in society should not judge a woman by by um how should I put it? Um some people will will judge um, 
Lady B, Lady B, in the, in the story as someone who was manipulated, mm -hmm. um, someone who gave a lot of trust and faith in mm -hmm. in, 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 in the man, mm -hmm. and even when she found out, you know how far how further down the rabbit hole was she gonna go? Um, instead of looking at it like this is a woman who was manipulated, um, a woman who put a lot of trust into a man and in, in today's society in today's society you know putting trust Are you in there man, yeah I'm, I'm can you hear me yeah i can hear you putting trust into a man you know it's it's nowadays it's, it's, it's still kind of hard you know because we as a black community it's bad enough we don't trust nor love one another as it is so when you have a man who is old enough to be not just maybe a father, but a grandfather out here playing those type of games with a woman who is actually being a woman, a mm -hmm. queen who is being a queen, living up to her, her queenly, uh, royal, her royal responsibilities as a queen and that being played upon, um, it's not right. So, you know, the, when, 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 when you, when I'm bringing the story to life, I have to bring it from that. I have to bring it from that angle. Like, yo, look, I'm not bringing this from a man's perspective. I'm bringing this from a human who was uh, manipulated mm -hmm. and just treated straight up wrong. And the story has to be told that here's a woman who would have been the you best there, woman, who would have been the best woman, who would have been the best wife who's a white, who's wife material, right? who got treated wrong. And it's my job to put that in, in, into the best perspective that I can put it in um, from the lens mm. and, from, and from writing the script. Um, I'm not here to bash, bash the man. Mm. I'm also here to write, why is his moral compass broken? As Pop said, you know, why is he doing what he does? Why is he doing what he's doing? What is his backstory? Why is he such an anal retentive prick? Why is he doing what he, the things he's doing? Why is he playing two black queens? Mm. Why are you playing with two black queens in the 2000s? Mm. You know? So. Okay. Uh, you know, that that is very inspirational coming from the man's standpoint to say something so powerful, you know, in respect for women, because, you know, being that the pandemic is going on, as all of us know already, the percentage of domestic violence is on the rise. It has down here in Texas, the shelters have went up to 17 percent higher than what it was. So for you to say those type of words in incitement, I mean, it means a whole lot. And I truly thank you for that. Now, what we're going to do, um, I'm going to, because I can't get everybody to do the nutritional thought. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is that um, I think I'm going to go with, because Mikey J has been with us so many times, and I've been back and forth with Ms. Shani Williams. So Ms. Shani Williams, um, I'm going to give you this window. And what I want you to do is to speak to the viewers and on behalf of everyone, just give that one woman out there, a, you know, a word of nutrition based on what you have been through with this movie, reading the book, just give her words of encouragement. So right now, everyone, this is Miss Shani Williams. Um, basically, I would let them know, you know, don't, you're not alone, you know. A lot of women go through this. Just stay strong. Just um, just be aware. Don't be so naive. Don't be so quick to fall in love. You know, become friends with this person and try to get to know that person on a friendship level. And then try to, you know, just don't be so naive. You know, and there, there are women, there are older women who may have gone through, you know, things like this. So, you know, talk to them. You know, let them guide you. You know, just 
Yeah, just you know, just don't be so naive and just, you know, just be strong. There are people out here who have gone through the same thing. So don't be embarrassed. Don't be, you know. It's just it's just rough, you know, because I know a lot of people who, who go through this, you know, and it's really sad. So, you know, just be strong. That's all. Just be strong. Now, Mr. Garden, since yes. you are the chef and you have been in this role fully, can you give any words of encouragement when it comes down to speaking to the men out here that could be treating a woman like this that does not know how to love her in the right way? Could you offer some words of encouragement to the men? Sure. The role that I'm playing is clearly a role that I'm playing. I'm a father, I'm a grandfather, and I have the utmost respect for women. So if you have a queen in your life or looking to have one in your life, make sure you treat her with the utmost respect that you want for yourself. You know, it's simple. You know, we are all human and we came from a woman. So therefore, you should always respect the woman. Don't do what Chef Jay does. I don't even do what Chef Jay does. This is a role that I'm playing, not the man that I am. Thank you, thank you. And it's good that you cleared that up because I, I don't want you to be out on the street and then you have a woman approach you thinking that you have a character. Oh, I already thought about that. Hey, <laughs> I, got a line, I got a line in colorblind I'm going to have to defend myself on. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, hey, Spicy. Yes, sir. Uh, I want. I just want to piggyback off of this, the same um the Are you same Mikey? Yeah, I, I just want to say something in retrospect to the same question. Um, we going to give him you can hear me? made it to come back because I think he froze on us. You can hear me? There you go. All right. Uh, I just want to piggyback off that real quick. Okay. Off, off what um, Shawnee and uh, Pops just said. You know, there's a lot of men out there, you know, that actually are still playing a lot of games upon a woman's emotions. And when you're playing with their emotions, you're also playing with their mental stability and their spirituality. You see, a, a person can lose their faith and a person can lose their their mental awareness and get lost within themselves. And when men are out there playing those kind of games with women, it's not right. Because here you are damaging a potential bride. You're out here uh, da damaging a mother, you know, or a potential mom. You're out here, do, you're just, you're just uh, planting poison pills and seeds. And when when you're doing that, that's another man's job to clean up. And another man shouldn't have to clean up a mess that was laid or made by another man. You know, there should be no messes. You know, I believe if you're going to get into a relationship, you should get into the relationship wholeheartedly a thousand percent. You should give a thousand and ten percent. You should love her, treat her as the queen she is. Respect her, honor her, admire her, and be her partner and her friend. And if a lot of more, and if a lot more brothers can adhere to the fact that women are not bitches, sluts, whores, thoughts, and and and, and any other derogatory term that you could think of, then we in the black community will do much better. Okay. Yeah, Miss Lewis, you you there? Can you hear me, Miss Lewis? Okay. Well, I truly do thank all of you. Are you there? Okay. Uh, do you have any uh, insightful words that you want to speak of right now while we have this window of opportunity? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you. Okay. Do you have any words of inspiration? I yeah, I can hear you. Are you there? Hello. Okay. Can you hear me?
Okay. I think we're having some more technical difficulties. So uh, we're definitely going to have to bring Miss Lewis back on another day. And I truly do thank all of y'all for being a part of the discussion hour. It's been such a joy. I wish all of y'all the best in what y'all doing. And God bless all of y'all. Thank you, Mikey J, for introducing me to Miss Lewis. It has been a joy. Shani, thank you so much for everything. PJ, I look to really meet you in person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tia, nice, I wish you the best and Mr. Gordon thank you so, so much and I'm going to tell you every time I hear that old school song I'm going to be thinking about you thank you everyone for tuning in make sure you go to my YouTube channel later it will be uploaded on Spicy Grace channel please go on there subscribe comment like and share y'all have a blessed week and thank you all so very much we're going to leave this out with one of Mikey J's songs. Thank you for the music plays. I appreciate it. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. It's your boy. <laughs> Yo. You know, I got a love Jones. <laughs> and I'm going to let you know what it is. Have you ever in your life, girl, been wine and dine? Well, that is what I do if you gave me the time. The mother chicks are done if you decided to be mine. The mothers do the corny girl, kick them off the line. Flowers, candy, edible arrangements, shows, a movie, some other entertainment. Life for me would be your best decision. Playing hard to get is not an impossible mission. If you think about it, girl, you're in a good position. An old school swag with some new school flair. I'll be your best friend, even wipe away your Oh, so sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> this board is really tripping today, so but we're not gonna even let that get to us. <laughs> yeah. Y'all have a blessed it's your boy. And I wish y'all all a merry, uh -huh. merry Christmas. Yo. Mm -hmm. You know. I got a love Jones. <laughs> and I'm gonna let you know what it is. Have you ever in your life, girl, been wine and dine? Well, that is what I do if you gave me the time. The mother chicks are done if you decided to be mine. The mothers do the corny girl, kick them off the line. Flowers, candy, edible arrangements, shows, a movie, some other entertainment. Life for me would be your best decision. Playing hard to get is not an impossible mission. If you think about it, girl, you're in a good position. An old school swag with some new school flair. I'll be your best friend, even wipe away your tears, even get your pantene when it's time to wash your hair. See, I don't have an issue when it comes to pampering, even when you get your pads when you start cramping it. Your future's looking rather good, sit and think hard. Your plans have an answer, and you owe it all to God. I got a love Jones, love Jones, 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 love Jones, I got a love Jones. Love Jones, love Jones, love Jones. Sweet lemonade, girl, sweet potato pie. Sweet like a sugar candy apple in my eye. Let me take the sugary spot between your thighs. Now tell me, would you like that? All right, all right, all right. Huh. You be my genie in the lamp, but I won't rub you three times. I'll lick you like a stamp. But on the real girl, we can chill and wait for that. Get our freaking mileage on, leave the safe for that. Maybe hit a beat. Maybe Costa Rica mm. What I'm gonna do with your girl Use a keeper Pretty brown eyes, babe When'd you get them peepers? Any dude acting up with you I put him in the sleeper All I see is the best for you The finer things in life The house with a picket fence With Scott, I want some ice A coupe in the garage Sedan in the driveway Pop the top in the summer Cruise along the highway <laughs> Yeah, you know You know, life is too short So I gotta let you know how I'm feeling. And it's your boy Mikey J. Mikey Jones. And I gotta love Jones. For you.